Hi, I'm Chris Urquhart, publisher of Nash Awakenings Magazine, and we're here today with Hilary Morris of Stewart Acupuncture. Hilary has her master's in traditional oriental medicine and practices Chinese herbal medicine, acupuncture, Chinese medical massage, and Chinese nutrition. Thank you so much for joining us today, Hilary. We're glad you're here. Okay. I'm very interested in hearing about how we can stay healthy from the Chinese medicine perspective. It's my understanding that there's a little bit more to it than just acupuncture. So maybe you can take us through that. Sure. Um, in traditional Chinese medicine, a lot of people associate that with just acupuncture, which is it is great normally. Um, but there's actually five separate branches of traditional Chinese medicine. Obviously, the acupuncture. And then there's Chinese herbs, and there's what's called Tui Na, which is Chinese medical massage. There's Qigong, which is, if you've ever seen um, videos of people in China in the parks moving slowly to, to almost a Tai Chi type exercise, that's, called, that's often uh, Qigong is what they're doing. It's incredibly healthy and, and, and build it, building for the body. And then finally, there's Chinese medical um, nutrition, Chinese nutrition. So those are the five branches that uh, traditional Chinese medicine consists of. That's awesome. So um, right now, are you able to uh, practice acupuncture? Right now, um, I've made the decision, along with most acupuncturists in the state, that um, to, to close down in, in, um, in hopes of helping flatten the curve for the spread of coronavirus. Um, and um, also, you know, if someone does have an urgent need for acupuncture, I know that it's possible to uh, receive treatment right now. But most of us, including myself, are moving towards telemedicine um, and using the power of the internet to connect with our patients as well as any new patients who might need um, treatment at this time. Obviously, you can't do acupuncture over the internet, but uh, we can we can certainly do Chinese herbal medicine and um, dietetics and some helpful breathing exercises. So this is what I've been doing with my patients currently. Awesome. So with the Chinese herbal medicine, um, since it's um, Chinese in nature, are you seeing um, some information that is giving you guidance to use um, with people who may even have be positive for COVID-19? Actually, yes. Um, in China itself, which obviously where COVID originated, um, Hospitals have integrated herbal medicine as well as acupuncture into their hospitals um, as a matter of course. There's actually departments of herbal medicine. So what we've seen coming out of the hospitals are a very clear protocol for treatment of COVID-19 all the way from preventative through recovery. So there's nine, actually nine different formulas that have been um, put forward and there's been some research showing their effectiveness. So most of my uh, treatment protocols that I, when I'm working with someone who either um, is worried about contracting COVID and wants to build up their immune system, or for somebody who has contracted it, and I have not personally seen anybody yet uh, through telemedicine who has contracted COVID, but um, most of my patients are coming in for the immunity boosting. There is a very clear protocol of what herbs are effective. Um, to help build up um, a person's chi and blood, which is really the immune system of the body. So from a Chinese uh, medicine perspective, how does that work? How is, how is chi related to the immune system and the blood? And, you know, for those of us who are not immersed okay. in it, can you kind of give us yeah. some good questions? Um, in Chinese medicine, um, when someone is experiencing a deficiency of chi, or a deficiency of blood. Now remember with blood, that's not what we think of as blood in the Western medicine. Although there are aspects of Chinese blood that overlap with what we consider, what we know as blood in the West, in Western medicine. In Chinese medicine, it's actually called shui, which is spelled X-U-E. And um, there, the two components of building up your immune system are qi and blood. Qi is the more masculine yang energy and blood is the more feminine and yin energy. So both of those components should be strong and built up, and you can do that with herbs. There are herbs that are particularly um, geared towards building a body's chi, often the spleen chi. And then there are herbs that are specifically geared towards treating the body's blood. And some herbs obviously do both. 
So a lot of the formulas I'm seeing coming out of China right now, especially the preventative ones, include a lot of these herbs that are um, building uh, the qi and the blood, like herbs like huang chi, which you may have heard of. Um, it's astragalus. So some people may know that herb astragalus mm -hmm. um, from a Western perspective. And that's a main herb that we use um, to build up the body's qi and resistance and strength. As we age, we all suffer from something called immunosenescence, which is a decline in our body's immune function. Mm -hmm. So older people tend to be more vulnerable to not only COVID, but many other illnesses. So for my older patients in particular, I recommend using herbs like this to strengthen their immunity mm -hmm. and um, along with a few breathing exercises and movements. So when you were talking about the, um, the chi and the blood, is, is, that, is it like the yin and yang that we hear about? Is it still the, the is it yeah. masculine and feminine thing? And is it just, the, is it just um, chi and blood or are there other yin and yang um, paradigms, I guess is the word, within Chinese right. medicine. Yeah, qi and blood are generally, yes, they're the physical manifestations of yang in the case of qi and yin in the case of blood. Um, so we always like to strive for a balance between yin and yang in Chinese medicine, whether it's emotionally or physically. And so when, someone's when someone presents to me, um, sometimes they'll present with an excess of yang um, sometimes a patient, for example, comes in and they're immediately irritable or annoyed, you know, with something. And that's not, that's not a problem. That reveals something to me about what's going on with them. Um, and a deficiency of yin, we often see in older women um, who are going through menopause and things like that. They get dry skin, um, dry hair, um, and the yin is the more nourishing feminine aspect, which declines as an age. So it just, it, it's important when you're meeting a patient to really differentiate um, what's going on with them. Um, and one formula, one acupuncture prescription doesn't fit all. So um, a custom formula, for example, for Chinese herbs is really effective, particularly in these times, because I can tailor the formula if someone's experiencing want some, an immune building formula, but they also have insomnia, for example, because they're anxious. Mm -hmm. We can wear, wear that, what that insomnia is due to and work with that within the formula. So is it fair to say that with all of your branches within Chinese medicine, that the goal with using those different pieces is to bring balance, regardless of where the person is? You're looking to bring balance and let the body do its thing. Is that right. an accurate? A balance and as a, it's, a, it's a preventative medicine. So a balanced person doesn't get sick. Right. You know, if, if you're, you're totally balanced um, in, in your emotional, physical, and uh, in your emotional and physical being, it's far le you're far less likely to get sick in any way. Um, so our goal always is to catch somebody before they are sick uh, and to make sure that they don't get sick. That's a, it's a preventative medicine. So herbs and acupuncture are, are wonderful for that. So I heard you mention um, insomnia and even anxiety. Is that the what are you seeing right now? Are you seeing an increase in that, or or is it? Yes. <laughs> yes, I would say I would say about half the patients who call me are calling because of anxiety. Some of them, it's worsening. They and you know, this is something they have come to me before for, um, or this is something new to them. They, you know, they begin to feel a pressure in the chest and they think, oh my goodness, is this my lungs? You know, am I getting sick? Mm -hmm. So obviously I, I, I try to differentiate what's going on, you know, and a lot of people have difficulty breathing when they have anxiety, there's pressure in the chest. So um, a lot of my patients are experiencing insomnia now mm -hmm. and anxiety and that, you know, we're going through an unparalleled moment and people do not know what to expect. So for anybody who is suffering from anxiety, um, you know, it's important to see it for what it is and to try to address it. But, you know, it's nothing to be ashamed of, especially right now, because it's a very difficult time. Yes, we're all being bombarded with an awful lot of information that can invoke fear, which feeds anxiety, which feeds yes. insomnia, and we need to sleep to stay healthy yes. and heal. We know that. So obviously, those are all foundational components to, to make yes. it through this curve we're trying to flatten right now. Um, so 
it seems like the people are calling you. So even though you're not seeing people in patients, I mean, I'm sorry, seeing patients in person, this is something you are able to do with telemedicine. True. Yeah. It's That's actually pretty, much through the, through the pretty interesting. I mean, it's not something I had thought of doing before. There was no need to, but um, you know, the power of the internet has enabled me to continue to connect with my patients as well as new patients and help them. And that's, that's my goal is, you know, when I realized I wanted to shut down or re was required to shut down my office, my first concern was, what about my patients? They, you know, I would like to be able to connect with them, um, even just to check in, how are they doing? And so telemedicine has really proved to be something that um, has been helpful not only for me, but for a lot of my colleagues. Um, and yes, I'm getting calls from people who would like herbs. Um, it's not just as simple as calling me and saying, can you please send me some COVID herbs? That's not how it works. So it's, and they're not, <laughs> we don't think of them as COVID herbs. We think of them as building your chi and blood. I need to talk to you and figure out what's going on with you. Each person is unique. And um, obviously, you know, if you're taking certain drugs, I want to know that. Um, so, but you know, each appointment is brief. 20 to 30 minutes of telemedicine and uh, the herbs will be delivered, can be delivered right to your door. So there's no need to come to my office or anything like that. Um, so there is a way to stay healthy um, using Chinese medicine, even though right now it's difficult to actually see your practitioner. Right. It really is wonderful. All the innovations that are coming out of this new normal for us where we're trying to figure out how to stay connected and and keep getting the services that we we really want and need um, yeah, I agree. yeah and the other thing you mentioned was chinese nutrition how does i i don't know a lot about how chinese nutrition is um specific specifically different than just general nutrition and how that plays into our overall health maybe there's um something there you could give us a couple of tips sure. Um, well, I mean, and we, when I say Chinese nutrition, I really mean using the power of food as medicine. So in the same way that I would do a differential diagnosis on a patient coming for acupuncture or coming for herbs, I would do the same thing if they were coming for dietary advice. What's deficient? What's in excess? What needs nourishment? What needs sedating? And there are foods that are particular, particularly helpful. For those conditions. Um, right here on the Treasure Coast, we have two wonderful Asian food markets that are open and they carry a lot of these nutritional foods. You can make them into kanjis or soups. So it's very similar to how I would use herbs. Chinese dietetics, um, the, the way I practice it is thinking of food as medicine. Um, so um, I would approach it the same way I approach someone curious about herbs during this time. So again, it's about balance, even in what you're, about what you're feeding about what you're feeding the body. So it's always really about balance. balance. That's yeah. great. Well, you've given us um, a really ni a nice, um, different perspective on how we can approach health, especially with the key of staying balanced. So I think, especially right now, staying balanced is what we want to be doing. So I really appreciate you sharing. Um, your knowledge and, and your perspective of, of how we can um, help ourselves right now. I appreciate the opportunity to connect with your readers and your viewers. And, you know, I hope that everyone is staying safe and washing their hands and meditating, taking a little time for yourself, turning off the news, maybe. <laughs> yes, I'm a big proponent of a news diet right now. Just get what maybe. we need and don't focus on it as much. Yeah, and stay, stay home. And stay safe, for sure. Well, for those of you who want to reach out to Hillary, she's Stuart Acupuncture. Her office, which you can go to after we flatten the curve, is at 7000 Southeast Federal Highway, uh, Suite 205 in beautiful Stuart, Florida. The phone number to reach her, especially now with telemedicine, is 772-266-8165. And you can find out more online at stewartacupuncture.com. So that's and if you, if you can, email me if you want to connect. It's a little bit easier right now um, to connect via email. And then, of course, we'll connect on a phone. But the initial contact, the email is a little bit better right now. And the email is on your website or? 
Just my name, Hillary at stewardacupuncture.com. There we go. So okay. shoot her an email, find out what you need to know to stay healthy and everyone be well and stay connected. Thank you.